Well, let's get excited in the Lord's house. Amen. Come on. We have, the, we have a lot to Woo! praise the Lord about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! That says a lot when the married couple, the newlyweds, are in the house of the Lord. Amen. I believe the Lord gives a special blessing upon that. So I'm, I'm excited for them. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We came to this house to praise the Lord. Amen. I know what you came to do. You came to praise the Lord too. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed, I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed. Trouble knocking at my door today, I ain't gonna let it in. Worry trying to steal my joy, hallelujah, I ain't gonna let it win. Cause on my best day, I'm a child of God, on my worst day, I'm a child of God. Oh, and every day, it's a good day. I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed, I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed. Oh, your birthday, every day's a good day. Now let me tell you why. If you've got air in your lungs, if you got blood in your body, you are a child of God. Come on, they see that somebody. It's on my best day. I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. Oh, and every day is a good day. You're the reason why. It's on my best day. I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. Oh, and every day is a good day. Let's go to the top. Trouble knocking at my door today. I ain't gonna let it in. Worry, wanna steal my joy. Away. I ain't gonna let it win. Cause on my best day, I'm a child of God. I'm a I'm so blessed. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. When I wouldn't count the problems that I see. Hope looks all for God. But when I count the ways you're good to me, you got me counting all day long. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Got this heartbeat in my chest. No, it doesn't matter about the rest. I got you, Lord. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Got this heartbeat in my chest. No, it doesn't matter about the rest. My God, you, Lord, I'm so blessed. Whether it's your best day, your worst day, some Tuesday or your birthday, every day's a good day. Now let me tell you why. If you got air in your lungs, if you got blood in your body, you are a child of God. Come on, they see this, somebody. Cause on my best day, I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. Oh, and every day, it's a good day. You're the reason why, cause on my best day, I'm a child of God, on my worst day, I'm a child of God, oh, and every day is a 
children of the most high God. Amen. Amen. We have a lot to praise the Lord about. We're Amen. breathing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're breathing. We have life inside of yes. us because of the Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Thank, you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is so good. And if we would take him for his word, the word of God is truth. If you would take him at his word, our lives would be a little bit more different. Everything he says is right. His way is the best way. Come on. His plan is the best plan. When we try to get involved, it, we kind of mess it up sometimes. We're so thankful for his mercy and his grace that is ever abounding in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. We didn't get what we deserve. Pastor Rocky shared that this morning with us. We didn't get what we, what we deserved. Hallelujah. I'm thankful because, oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't get what I deserved. But I got mercy and grace. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. You got mercy and Amen. grace. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're blessed to be in the house Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Like Pastor Rocky said, there is nothing impossible with the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Have your way in this place, in Jesus' name. Holy, that's who you are, angels, and earth sing a song for your honor, because power belongs to you, power belongs never grow tired of telling you you're worthy. There's so many ways I can sing of your glory. I will never get tired of telling you you're worthy. Oh, Oh! 
singing holy, holy to my one and only who is like our God. Let our hearts adore you as we bow before you. There's no one like our God. I could never grow tired of telling you you're worthy. There's so many ways I Sing of your glory. I will never get tired of telling you you're worthy. There's so many ways I can sing of your glory. I could never grow tired of telling you you're worthy. There's so many ways I can sing of your glory. I will never get tired of telling you you're worthy. Over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, over and over again. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church, let's worship. Hallelujah. tired of worshiping you. Your praise will forever be on our lips. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you that our day is going to be so blessed because we chose to put you first. Thank you for the children of the gathering center. Thank you for every family represented here today. Hallelujah. Thank you for Ashley and Travis. Lord, we pray for your hand of blessing and favor to rest upon them. We thank you, Lord, for every leader, every laborer in this church and ministry. Hallelujah. We thank you for the associate pastors and their families. Hallelujah. The worship pastor, the youth pastor, and their families. Hallelujah. We thank you for the apostle of the house and for his family. We thank you for the missionary in the house and for his family. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace all around us. We thank you, Lord. We, every day we see the beauty of your holiness.
Thank you, Lord. We're so blessed. So, so blessed. We pray for our nation. We pray for our government, Lord. We pray for those who are hurting, those who have lost loved ones, Lord, that you would blanket them with your peace. We lift up to you, Lord, those all around the world going through so many things, so much calamity, so many things going on. Please help them to come close to you so that you can come close to them, Lord. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Jesus, for the cross, for the precious blood that you shed for us. Because of you, we have healing, we have salvation, we have deliverance. Because of you, we have abundant life, eternal life. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Have your way in this place. Overtake your people in this house today. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, all of God's children say amen. Good morning. And we're blessed for Travis and Ashley and all the family. You know, so blessed. Like the song says, we're so blessed. So blessed, so blessed, so blessed, so blessed. The title kind of tells you everything today. Turn me down just a little bit, please. Thank you. The title says everything today. So many times when we look at ourselves, we see ourselves through our eyes, how we see us. But God sees us a lot different because he knows the future. And because he knows the future, he sets you up for success. He sets you up to receive everything he has. But for us to think that we know ourselves better than God, we made a big mistake. God knows everything about us, every hidden thought, and we're going to see it in the Word, every hidden thing. And it's not a negative, it's a positive. It's nice to have somebody with you that knows everything about you that you don't know about yourself. Self-examination, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says to examine ourselves. But if we examine ourselves in our own education, our own experience, and the things we think, we're not going to get the full value of who we are because we actually are more valuable than we think. God sees us as valuable. To Him, we are precious, precious in His sight. And it doesn't mean that we can do anything we want. It means that He sees us through His Word. And His Word is pure. It's holy. The Bible says it's righteous. It has no flaw. God has no flaws. So today we're going to learn about us, but I'm not going to examine you. You're going to examine yourself. I'm going to examine myself. It's like a self-examination. Like when you go to the doctor, a lot of times they ask you questions, right? How are you doing today? How are you feeling? Any pains? Any aches? Anything bothering you? So you're giving them a self-diagnosis to help them out to see what they need to do for you, right? I know when I go to the doctor, I don't like the doctor just to look at a computer. I don't mind that for a little while. Then I want him to look at me because I'm a person. Check my ears, you know, check my nose, check my eyes, check my mouth. Maybe that's too old school for some, but unless you're going to plug me into a computer, I want you to look at me, you know. If you plug somebody, that means I'm an android and I'm not an android. So we're just going to be blessed today to know that God doesn't want us to be robots. He wants us to be ourselves, but he wants to see us to see ourselves the way he sees us. Do you know in life we meet people, right? When you serve God, the people that's going to hinder you from doing what God wants you to do, He's going to remove from you. In other words, they're not going to influence you or be in your influence. Why? Because that would interfere with what God is doing, what He wants done. When I became born again, I don't know about anybody else, but I, I lost a lot of friends or what I thought was friends. Because He separates you from people that don't see you as He sees you and not going to help you to accomplish your task or your assignment on earth. You all have a purpose on earth. We all have a purpose. And God's going to make sure He secures that purpose because He is the one that actually knows everything. And that's what we're here to do today. Give Him some glory. Is that okay? Amen. You know, we should be excited for God. Thank you so much. We should be excited for God because God gets excited for us. Amen. You know, go to football games, you know, wow, man, everybody gets so excited. You go to boxing matches, whatever, you know, sport you like or whatever it is. Get excited, right? You cheer on your team, right? I don't see too many people in the Super Bowl just sitting there going. I see them yelling, shouting for their team, right, who they want to win, right? They're excited. Sometimes they even get in fights. I mean, it's serious, you know. But sometimes when we worship God, we're like, oh, well, I'm kind of tired today, so I'm just going to. We gotta worship God in everything. It's not just about singing. I like what Billy Graham said. You don't need to be on your knees to pray. You can pray 24-7 from your heart to God when you're driving, when you're walking. It's okay to be on your knees. He said his testimony is he told his daughter, Your knees are like leather. 
You, you don't have to always go on your knees. And she goes, yes, Dad, I have to because that's what God wants me to do. So you have to hear God for what God wants you to do. God never contradicts His Word. So today we're going to read the Word together, and then I'm going to kind of go in that chapter, 139 in Psalm. I'm going to go backward and forward and just kind of share the Scriptures as what God says in His Word through the psalmist David. David, he established worship. He had like 700 in his choir. Didn't even have amplifiers or microphones. But when they sang, everybody thought there was a party going on. Yeah. Do we sing like there's a party going on or we sing like it's the end of the party? Uh -oh. <laughs> You're going to have to decide that for yourself. Let's go ahead and read the word today in Psalm 139, verse 4, uh, New Living Translation. Ready? Let's read together. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and bless you this morning. We give you all the glory, all the honor and praise, and want to bless you this morning for each and every one that's here, our lives, the breath that we have within us. We command every organ of our body to line up with the Word of God. Let us walk in the healing power of Jesus Christ, and we just bless you and give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Associate Pastor, Pastor Al, Oster Miller, it's his birthday today. He is laid up like nobody else in the house, amen, and he well should be. God has blessed us to have him in this ministry and served a full term in the United States Army, uh, retired a lieutenant colonel, gave 30 years of his life to the service of others. I honor all branches, amen. We should always honor all branches. Soldiers do what they're called to do. doesn't mean we have to agree with all the political power that governs them. We have to agree with the soldiers who fight for freedom for all. Amen? So let's give God some praise for Pastor Al's birthday today. Amen. So we read in, in verse one, or verse 4, excuse me, it says, You know what I'm going to say before I say it. We should just think about that for just, just a minute. Before you even think of saying something, God already knows what's going to come out of your mouth. So I would think he should get the full respect. Verse 2, I'm going to go backwards. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. Verse 3 says, you see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. Verse 5, you go before me. You follow me. Your place, you place your hand of blessings upon my head. And verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Too great to understand. We know that God loves us and He cares for us, but do we really know who He is? Do we really reverence Him like we should? Do we honor God as He is rightfully should be honored in respect? I don't know about you, but the fear of the Lord is a reverencing and a respect, not trembling and shaking and getting all upset about things. This is how good God is about all the things that He does. And today, as we look at these scriptures, David is saying, God knows everything about us. Amen. Everything. He knows a sin that you might want to commit before you think of committing that sin. And that always kind of shook me up. I'm like, man, if you know, then why don't you just stop me? It'd be a lot better for me, right? Well, God gives free will and doesn't take that away. All of us have free will to choose. We choose to love Him. We choose to serve Him. We choose to honor Him. We choose what we choose. Every day we make choices. Some choices I make, I don't know if it's the right choice until I make it. And sometimes that's how we learn in the process of what God gives us. It's, you know, we don't know the future. We only know what we know to do those things or to make those choices. So I'm going to go over a few characters here. Thanks, Pastor. I'm going to go over a few characters here, which you know well. So we're going to kind of go backwards, and then I'm going to go into Genesis, the early part. But in Genesis 22, 12, Abraham sacrifices or puts his son up on the altar to sacrifice. Remember that? Takes Isaac up to the altar. He has to build the altar. He gets up there. And he puts his son there, and the son asks, and he said, what? God will what? Provide. So we say Jehovah Jireh, but Jireh by itself means to see. When you put Jehovah in front of it, God will provide because he sees. It's intense. Every language has its own way. Even the Hawaiian language, if you put two compound words or words together making a compound word, it means something else. You know. So same with God. Everything he does, his name in front of everything changes everything. Everything. Jehovah Rapha, not just Rapha healed, it's Jehovah God heals. Amen. So we give him the glory, we give him the honor, we identify him as the healer. And that's why Jehovah Jireh means, and Pastor, I'll share this sometime back in the message, Jehovah Jireh means that he sees. So he sees everything, but he also provides everything. Yeah. Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all our needs. 
but it's through Christ Jesus. So as we look at the word, we see Abraham up there. Now I want to show you something in, in what was said by the angel of the Lord. So the angel of the Lord, it says, the angel of the Lord said, after Abraham had put his son on the altar, after he was laid out and that time was going to come, we had to sacrifice his son. I just want to take a break now. You notice he didn't tell his wife. Right? Because if you tell your wife that you're going to take your son and sacrifice that son, that was a promise at the time that she was very well in age, that God had opened her womb when having birth was passed for her time in, in her age, you, you think she's going to let him sleep through the night? At the least, she'd tie him up. At the least, who knows what else she'd do. Because he was under order of God, and he knew. But if you go back into the Word, you'll find out later on in the New Testament, it says that Abraham knew that God could raise him from the dead. He was confident. So see, his faith was already accurate. And that's pretty difficult to understand if our faith is not where it should be with God, meaning trusting him for everything. God doesn't do anything evil and wrong. He's, un he's not capable of that. His whole personality cannot be attributed to any evil or wrongdoing. He's perfect. He's holy. He's righteous. Everything he does is right, even when you don't or I don't agree. He's always right in those areas. So the angel of the Lord now speaks to Abraham. And the angel of the Lord says something that a lot of people look and go, what? The angel of the Lord said, for now I know that you fear God. Well, it doesn't mean that God didn't know. See, let me share it this way so you understand. Now you know that God knows. That's what it actually means. God is fully knowledge. He knows everything. We can't say he knows everything, but he didn't know that. He fully knows everything. So most of the time, God is going to give us something, and it's going to help us to know, right, that we know, yes. now what he knows Amen. about us. So it's important that Abraham had to see how much he loved God, how much he cared for God. But when we go to the New Testament, we know that his faith had generated that he was totally, I said he was totally persuaded that God could raise him from the dead if that was the case. Now that's a hard thing because none of us ever go through that. God would not ask us to do that. That would be criminal today, right? Yes. CPS would come and lock you up yeah. along with their friends. So it's not that he would ask us that, but he's showing us an example of how we should love him and honor him and have faith in him and trust him. God knows forward and back, not just one place. So he knows what happened before, amen? He knows what, what, what happened is going forward. In Genesis 3.9, God asked Adam something. After he had sinned and he was hiding, remember what God said? Where are you? You think God didn't know his actual location and had a GPS tagged in on him? He knew exactly where he was. He was hiding. Sin causes us to hide. Pulls us back into our shell. And we don't want to go there because that's not a good place to be. And that's why God says, where are you? God wanted Adam to admit, to acknowledge, to take responsibility and accountability for who he was and why he was hiding. We know that God clothed him. But it's not that God didn't know. I'm going to give you another place in the Bible to verify all of that. And that goes with, after that, in Genesis 4-9. The Lord said to Cain, where's your brother? Y'all know the scriptures if you read. And he says, where is your brother? Where is Abel? Cain says, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? God's answer explains everything. Now he lied and asked a question in return. Did you catch that? He lied to God, which God knows everything. And he asked a question. In other words, am I bro my, my, my brother's keeper? In verse 10, the Lord says this. What have you done? Listen, he says. Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. God identifies. He knows exactly where Abel is. He knows exactly who killed Abel, and he knows exactly what happened when it happened, but yet calling Cain to accountability. He's calling us to accountability today. As you hear these words, they're not just empty words. They're words of power designed by God to the psalmist David to share with us who God is. We can sit down and pretend we don't know him, but we know him. Once we have the knowledge of God, we are responsible for that knowledge. We're responsible for that information. When I used to have, we used to have home Bible studies. I remember one of the truck drivers, I used to drive truck. I was a milkman for many years. And 
one of the um, one of the milkman, you know, he would come over. He came over to a Bible study, and it just so happened that evening I taught on tithes, tithing, and he got upset at me. He called me up later. He goes, "Why do you have to share that?" I go, "Why?" He goes, "Now I'm accountable." At least he listened to the words before, you know. And I go, "Well, that was about sharing. I didn't know you were coming that night, you know. That's what I shared. I shared the word of God." Let me tell you, for people that don't believe in tithing, and I don't offend anybody. If everybody didn't believe in tithing, churches wouldn't be open. Just to be blunt about it. That's what generates through charity the opening part. And the tithe isn't yours. The Bible says it's God's. So you're not doing, I'm not doing God any favor for being a tither. You can choose not to. Anybody can come to the church. But if everybody believed that, we wouldn't be here. You couldn't do it. And therefore, you have to understand, when you tithe... You're doing for God nothing. You're doing what God said is His. After the tithe, that's called the offering. You can't give an offering without a tithe. Somebody got to hear this today because God said it, not me. I'm just repeating it. You always get mad at the messenger. Don't get mad at the messenger. Like the mailman. You made the bills. He's just going to deliver it, man. He's not going to, you know, it's not his fault. <laughs> But I did share that, and that brother did say that from the garage. He was a little upset. He did call me, though. At least he didn't say it that day. But that was not because of the actual tide. It was because now he's responsible for the information. Once you hear the truth, even if you reject it, you're responsible. I'm responsible for it. It's not always easy to take the truth. It's not always easy to operate in the truth. But it's the truth. And so is that. So these characters all demonstrate you know, Cain and Abel and all the different things. God knows everything. We should stop living like He doesn't. We have to live like God knows everything. I think that will help us out a lot to do a better, uh, you know, a daily devotion, the words that come out of our mouth, the things we speak negative or positive. What God saw beforehand, He provided. That's why gyro by itself just means to see. But just seeing isn't enough. God is a provider. So he not only sees your need, he provides it. Philippians 4.19, he provides it. And it's put up before him and he sees it. God provides because he sees everything before it happens. So sometimes, you ever notice sometimes your provision is there before you get there? It's because he already sees what you need before you ask or need it. The need is already supplied before. And that's because he is God. Before I, when I ever have to go to the doctor, I always pray that God give me the right doctor. You know, I do. I pray for the right nurse, amen, that don't stab you if they got to put a needle in you, you know. Not like having a bad day, go, <laughs> you know. But, <laughs> you know, I, I actually pray that. I said, Lord, you know, i got to go to the doctor. i got to go for physical or whatever it is you're going for. And I asked. I said, Lord, would you? And sometimes my wife helps, you know, because she'll search out. I, I saw my new doctor. I had to get a new doctor established. And I told him, I told him, listen, two doctors already retired on me. And I'm feeling a little older. And he told me, that's okay, I'm young, I'm not going to retire anytime soon. <laughs> but he was a really, he's from Texas, really nice man, you know. Um, but what I found interesting and blessed for me is he checked me out, looked over everything before I got there, checked out everything back to when I was a young teenager. So he knew everything, he started to learn everything about me on record. But then he turned and he goes, tell me why this, or tell me. He wanted to know why those things happened in my life at those times, because he was interested. And after all that, I was like, I thought, okay, that's it. And he, then he gave me an actual examination. And I was like a little taken back. And he goes, okay, did you get on my seat over here? It's my love seat over here. Did you get on my seat? I'm going to check you out. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know, he actually stuck something in my ear and up my nose. When is the last time that happened? Unless you go in for a certain thing. What I'm saying is that God provides even what you need in the world, in the medical profession, in wherever. If you just put him first and just say, God, could you give me the right doctor? Could you give me the right nurse? And, and, and he did. God did it. And I'm thankful for that. Because I don't want to be ministered to by someone that is totally science and doesn't have a foundation of understanding there is faith in the world. Amen. There are people that they would be seen and you know, he was recommended by uh, Pastor Bobby's doctor, which became mine, because my first one retired. And then, uh, uh, she, you know, she was a believer, a Christian, and she recommended him to Bobby for me because he loves animals. I think Pastor Rocky will like because he likes animals. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't quite know what that meant, but I did like him, so she was correct. 
He must be a good man because he, like, he brought his animals with him. Yeah. And I told him, I said, hey, while he was examining me, I said, hey, I heard you like animals. He goes, you know, you know a lot. I didn't tell you that. Uh, basically, yes. He said, yes, I love animals. But that means he has a good nature. And I believe that. And I told Bobby, when you see you know, the, the doctor, when you do see her again, please tell her I said thank you. Because that really was a blessing for me. The people you're connected to will bless you, will be part of your blessing. That's why God sets it up that way. Sometimes you might want to be somebody's friend and you're struggling to be their friend and they don't want to be your friend. There might be a reason other than what you think. God may be causing that friendship not to exist at this time because it won't help you to get to where you need to be. God is no respecter of persons. He isn't. He is good to everybody. He does everything perfect, but we have to choose to walk in that power. We have to choose to be part of that power. And I'm just here to encourage you today. God knows you better than you. You don't have to agree. It's the truth, though. So God saw beforehand. We know in the Word it says before you were conceived, He knew. Before your mom knew to have you in, your, in her womb, He knew you already. He knew you before mama knew you. He knew you before grandma knew you. He knows everything about us. When we do something, we should honor Him by asking Him. Now, He does want us to make decisions. He does teach us over life experiences. But sometimes we just got to ask Him. And you know, I remember uh, Apostle Nestor Strada of Cincinnati told me, if you go to the altar and ask God something, if He doesn't say anything, that's not a yes. You know, so if you spend an hour then, you don't get an answer. Don't walk away. It must be yes. <laughs> not always that way. Wait for an answer. Be like Daniel. He was patient, you know. God uses questions. Yes? You ever had a, you ever had a question in your heart from God? You know, he uses questions sometimes. But the questions he asks is not because he doesn't have the information. It's because... Listen, he asked questions, this is biblically sound. He asked questions to force us to confront our own hearts. To look inside. Not just on the outside. And it's never a condemning word. It's about encouragement and changing. He questions us not because he needs to know and understand, but we, what we need to know and understand, what God wants us to see in ourselves always. I remember, and I shared it with Bobby again, I shared it with the leadership uh, some time back. I got COVID for the second time, but it lasted about five days. It was more mentally than anything else. It was really weird. But, you know, just go through it. You stay home. And I don't care what, I don't care what the CDC says. I isolate. We do it here when you have a cold. Stay home. <laughs> it's not like, it's not COVID related. We did this for decades already. Why? Because we don't want to spread germs. But anyways, I was in the backyard of my dog, and I heard the Holy Spirit. And he asked me a simple question. And I was feeling kind of junky. Ever feel real junky? Like you don't want nobody to talk to you? You know, just feeling junky. And he <laughs> I know some of you know what I'm talking about. And he asked me, the Holy Spirit asked me a question within my heart. He said, what have you learned? And this is my answer that I said. I learned that I don't like a lot of things about me. Because when I'm my weakest, I see everything in me differently. You're not the strength that you normally have. You know, like Paul says, you know, in my weakness is my strength, you know. When I'm, if I'm sick, I'm healed. So we have to be honest with God, but it's not because God don't know the answer. He knows what I'm going to say before I say it, as I have to hear it through my own voice. I hope you leave today with one powerful thing, that God knows where you're going to go eat before you leave here. <laughs> it's pretty powerful, pretty powerful. <laughs> he sees us in everything. He's a wonderful, wonderful person. But God's questions are not based on Listen to this, interrogation. God's questions is based on intervention. Nobody likes intervention. You ever watch those shows, what is this, an intervention? Where you bring all your family together, you get that person, and you're trying to help them, right? You are trying to help them, but sometimes it doesn't because of wherever they're at. But God doesn't do it to interrogate you. He already has the information. He doesn't have to torture us. He doesn't have to put us through all this rigorous uh, questioning. He just asked us a simple question like he asked Cain, where's your brother? He already knew. He wanted Cain to admit it. Asked Adam, where are you? You know, it's not like God's going, where are you, Adam? Adam, I don't know. I can't see you, Adam. He knows where you are. Yeah. You've heard the, the saying before, we spend so much time telling God our problems when we should be telling our problems about our God. Because yeah. God already knows your problems. In fact, he knows when you are a problem. And me and us. I'm, I'm not, you know, we're not isolating here. We're just, we're just speaking. This is not a long message. This is a message to encourage you about your father. 
Amen. I want to share a, short, a very short story uh, that I shared with the leadership this morning that I read. I thought, it was, I thought it was a cool story. There was a soldier standing at the White House gate. He had tears in his eyes. And probably it was Army. And he you know, was weeping a little bit, and a little boy happened to walk by, and he said, what's the matter, soldier? And the soldier said, I'm trying to see the president. I need to talk to him. I just can't get in. He goes, oh, that's sad. That's pretty difficult. So the little boy just stood for a while, and he goes, take my hand. It's a little boy. The soldier grabbed his hand willingly, and he walked, and he walked by the first centuries at the gate like they weren't even seen or existed. Walked right past. And they got to the steps. Still nothing. Secret Service, like they didn't even see them. Got to the doors of the White House. They opened the doors, but they didn't look. They didn't even like they saw them. The boy walked in with the soldier. The soldier is kind of baffled walking in. And they walk further. They see the other Secret Service. No reaction. Then they walk to the over room. There's two standing by the door. And they open the door. And they open the office of Abraham Lincoln. And the little boy said, Dad, this soldier really needs to talk to you. See, that's how Jesus is for us. He holds our hand, takes us up to the Father, and He's the only one that we can communicate with to bring that, you know, to be having that open door. But I thought that story was so, I actually thought it was cute. I don't say cute too much. But I thought, oh, what a cute, because as I was reading them, I go, who's this soldier? Who's this little boy? Because I'm going on with it. And then when I read it, I went, wow. I was glad that it wasn't our present presidents. <laughs> Just saying. I, I, I thought it was going to either be George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. Somebody with good God core value. And that's what we need in America today. I'll leave it right there. I'm not going to go further. But we do, right? Our forefathers and the things that were and are, they should be always. God is for the people. It's his ch- we all, This is what I tell my son when he asks me, are we all God's children? I said, yes. But we're not all in God's family until we become born again and receive Christ into our heart. That's how you join the family. But we're all God's children, all of us, saved and unsaved. It says in the Word of God in Proverbs, He's the God of the saved and unsaved, the rich and the poor. He's God of everybody. So we cannot isolate and say, oh, He's only God of these people or these people. Amen. You go to heaven, you're going to find out there's no corners for nationalities. Yeah, the Samoans ain't going to be making a lot of noise over here. The Indians ain't going to be pounding their drums over there. If everybody's doing it there, I believe they're doing it together. They're worshiping the Master. There's no separation of gender. There's nothing in there that's going to indicate anything but unity and power. I believe that in heaven according to the word. Amen. And just a word for those that think they're not what they are and they want to be somebody else. It ain't going to work in heaven. It doesn't work. When God does something, it's perfect. It's exact. And so we have to understand how God creates. And when he creates, it's perfect and exact. The message today is to encourage you that God knows more about you than you know and I know about myself. So trust Him. Trust Him. He's the one we should trust. I have a closing statement, and the message is done. It's a short message today about how God not only loves us unconditionally, but wants the best for us. I want you to remember, when God asks you a question, it's not an interrogation, it's a intervention. Intervention. That, that's like deliverance, yes. right? But he knows everything, so he just wants you to say it to him so that you know that he knows. And that's what this whole message is about. I take you back in the past when you're in elementary school, if you can go back that far, and you're sitting in your class and your teacher comes to you and says, hey, listen, Wally, what's two plus two? You can answer. Four. Did the teacher not know that was four? She knew it was four. She didn't ask you because she didn't know the answer. She asked you because she wanted to make sure you knew the answer to that question. That's a low area of understanding to how God really is mighty and holy. Amen. Let's give him some praise this morning. I I didn't pick on you. And you had the right answer. You edumacated. All right. (laughs) So God is good to us. And he always does things to benefit us. So this morning... If anything, I'm here to ask you, what's two plus two? Four. Four. You guys get that later. Anyways, God is good to us. I'm blessed that you spend time with us today. I thank God for all of you. I thank God that he would give you an understanding of how great he is. And God knows you more than you.
God knows us more than us. Today I pray you come to another level with God. Not in a different dimension, but another level of faith to trust Him, to treat Him as you do believe He knows more than you and myself. Because when you can do that, in the New Testament, when Jesus would do a miracle, there was something he did. I call it the inner circle. There were 12 disciples, but only three would go in with him. Only three. It's not that he didn't love the other disciples. It's because their faith in who he is and was going to do these miracles was with him. He knew that they believed enough to not generate a negative atmosphere. He loved all 12 but only three were used. All of them did great works. So at times there will be a point where God uses you different than He uses someone else only because your faith and what you believe that He can and is capable of doing, which is anything, will then generate that atmosphere. We had spent many times as Benaiah was going through his healing, my wonderful son, in the ER. We had to generate a positive attitude in the ER in order to generate, and they came. The nurses would come. And what does that mean? That means you appreciate instead of grumbling. You say thank you to the nurse. Thank you to the doctor. Even though they're busy, guess what? They come back and check up more and more and more. Because you're generating an atmosphere of appreciation. You're generating an atmosphere that I care enough about you just like you're caring about me. And you might not agree with me because you never tried it. One day we were in there and God said, you need to change the atmosphere. You need to change it by your words. And it wasn't like I had, I was, we're already thanking God and praising Him. That part was done. We had to treat people like we're praising Him. Amen. Not complain about it. Not grumble about it. And they did come. And we had to, I mean, unfortunately, we had to go through those things. But God did a wonderful work, a miracle work in this young man's life. And when we go through those things, we have to have a positive attitude. And you have to be ready to change the atmosphere charge it. Daniel in the Bible, he changed the atmosphere. They had to end up eating what he was going to eat and he did eat. He had enough faith to know that no matter where he went, God was going to protect him. No matter what he did, God was going to be for him because God told him those things. But he changed the atmosphere. He charged it. You can be in a heathen nation and charge the atmosphere. One person because you love God so much. And you say, Lord, I'm just going to thank you for being here. I'm going to thank you for those that I meet. I'm going to thank you for what you bring into my life. I'm going to thank you. And then I'm going to thank them. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for being there for me. We raised Benaiah the same way. So even though someone serves you and you're paying for it, thank you. Appreciate your service so much. It makes a world of difference to that person and you charge the atmosphere. Well, you might not agree, but I believe that's what Christianity is all about. About being generous like God. I'm an extremist in the world before I w became a Christian as, a, as an ex-drug dealer and things I did wrong in the world. But God used that in the ministry of God because that your yes be yes and your no be no. So I don't go gray. I either am yes or no. So to me, it's very simple in life. Givers and takers, lovers and not lovers. <laughs> but it's a choice because if you walk that line long enough, you may fall off that rope. It's a thin line. Know that God loves us, cares for us, and He knows what you're thinking right now. Be careful. <laughs> Think nice thoughts. <laughs> God loves us all together. There's nobody exempt from His love. David said He'll love us up there or He'll love us in the grave. But we choose to be with Him up there when the time comes. And we won't be seated in a grave. God is good. And as we headed to the empty tomb time, we should glorify God for that empty tomb Amen. time, Resurrection Sunday. That's a powerful time to glorify God. Amen. So we love you and honor God in you. And we just want to thank you for joining us today again, Mr. and Mrs. Travis and Ashley Hancock. God bless you. God bless you. you know. I'm going to give you a, Pastor Bobby. I'm very, I, I'm transparent. Pastor Bobby told me, did you forget Travis's last name? I said, for a moment I paused. I was distracted by myself, <laughs> and I only put it in one place. And it's an easy name to remember, but I did pause. You know, I went, hmm. <laughs> it's the weirdest feeling. I don't know why I did it. I just thought I'd share it. Sometimes we go through those moments, amen, senior moments. I'm a senior. 
<laughs> God is good to us. But I remember that moment, you know, at that time. And, of course, Danny threw me off a little bit because I couldn't find him. I couldn't find Ashley's dad. I'm like, where is he? And he didn't say anything. Normally, the dad would go, I do. But he's like, so right from that era, we're real, right? Danny! <laughs> But I was blessed. Congratulations on your wonderful day. A wonderful, wonderful time with all of you. I appreciate you. And those that travel to come and see and be part of that family. And I'm just thankful to all of you being there. And it's so important to support each other. So if I was wearing a hat, and Travis says, hats off to you. Amen. God bless you. Father, we thank you this morning as we leave here. I pray we leave with a smile on our face and our hearts open to you and knowing that you love us and care for us. And that there's nothing that is impossible for you. So I want to thank God for all of you being here today. A special word of encouragement that God's going to do something this week for you. This is what we call a general word of power and prophetic, uh, how would you say, impartation. This week he's going to do something special for you. No matter where you are and who you are. Each of you will have something special done for you to confirm this word that God has ministered today. And I do not speak that out of my own intellect. And I would not be... Easily to say it unless I believed it with all my heart. So I know he's going to do something special. Now, if you have a need, it'll be attached to that need. If you don't have a need, he knows what you need anyway. So he's going to give you what you need before you need it, but it's going to be this week. All you have to do is believe. Not in me, but in the word that God just shared with you. So I minister that word to you, and you'll be blessed. Hallelujah. I know he's going to do something very special for Sheila. He's going to do something special for Whitney. He's going to do something special for all of you. Chelsea. Bobby Joe, good to see you. God is so good to us. We are thankful in this house. So if you're watching online, for you also, the greatest gift to me is the gift of Christ, Jesus Christ into our lives. So if you've never asked Christ into your life, we're just going to pray in here just for a moment. And we're going to ask you to pray with us. You can lift your hand up there. God sees you out there. We don't see you out there, but you can go to the archives. Whenever you go there, God wants you to know that His Son is the only way that you can come to Him. So this morning, if you would, just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I receive you today, and I thank you, God, for sending your Son. I know that I will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, give us a call. Give us an email. If you don't have a Bible, we'll send one to you. We love you and appreciate you. If you want to give an offering, we're a missions church, which means we have over 20 outreaches. All you have to do is go to wordoftruthmaui.org. There's a green button. You can press it. We have a page that's separate for Lahaina. If you want to give to Lahaina, because we do give personally to families. As we raise $1,000, we give them a $1,000 check. We have it hand-delivered, and we continue to do that. We gave through American Red Cross. We gave through Salvation Army. But now God had directed us some time back, some months back, to give individually. And what's attached to that check and that offering is you're not forgotten. It's a simple way to say we love you. We have not forgotten you. And you could not understand how much when God sows a seed into you, how much power moves in your life. Just as this week, you guys are all going to get a blessing. You should be smiling. You know, frowning takes more muscles, right? Smiling takes less. And if you've got a lot of wrinkles, you haven't been smiling a lot. Just a thought. Just a thought. But God bless you all. God, bring forth a powerful, powerful blessing into your life. And may the Lord continue to minister. May His face shine upon you as we're apart one from another. May He multiply your days with great health, longevity of life, good and blessed endurance, which means you make it through every trial that you have to go through and come up as an overcomer. May the Lord bless you and keep you and may His face shine upon you. Amen. God bless you.